Hi guys. So today we are going to be talking about the case that took over social media and that is the case of Gabby Petito. We are going to jump in to the timeline and everything up to today which is September 22nd and we're going to talk about everything that's been going on. There has been so many updates to this case. Every single day there's new updates. Okay so we're going to start off with who is Gabby? So Gabby Petito is originally from Blue Point, New York. She is the oldest of six. Gabby met Brian at Bayport Blue High School on Long Island and they started dating in March of 2019. The two ended up moving to Northport, Florida shortly after dating to live with Brian's family. And of July of 2020, Brian proposed to Gabby. So on Gabby's Instagram, she posted July 2nd, 2020, saying, here's a picture from our first date because I have so much love for you. Brian asked me to marry him and I said, yes, you make me feel unreal and every day is such a dream with you. Now on Brian's account, July 3rd, 2020, my biggest fear is that one day I'll wake up and it will have all been a dream because that is what every second has felt like since the moment we found each other. Till death do us part or until I wake up. I'm so happy to answer. The answer was yes. Love you, honey. <sighs> That's a little weird. They ended up planning on going on a cross country road trip in Gabby's renovated camper van for about four months. At this time before they went, Gabby was working as a pharmacy technician to save money for the trip. Well, they began their trip in July, on July 2nd, 2021. Now there is things saying that Gabby's mom said that they uh, postponed their engagement or just stopped um, because they were too young, but then the attorney said it was because of COVID. So we're not completely sure what's going on, but we know in some of the footage later on, the police footage, Brian calls her his fiance still. So we're gonna talk about the Gabby Petito update timeline. July 2nd, they began their road trip. On July 4th, they were at Monument Rock, Grove County, Kansas. And they both posted a picture that day when they started their whole trip. So Gabby's post was geotagged at Monument Rock and she said there's no place like the tiny home we built. Hashtag van life, travel, adventure, blog. So she was aspiring to be an Instagram like um, vlog and she also had like YouTube channel and everything. So that's what she wanted to do. Brian posted the same day, Monument Rock, July 8th through the, the 11th, they were at the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado. So when she posts Instagram, she has like really long texts with their pictures. So just keep that in mind because later on people speculate that most of the time later it wasn't her posting. Brian also posted pictures from July 10th at the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Now from July 16th through the 18th they were at Zion National Park in Utah and then they continued to camp outside during this time and instead of in their van they actually camped in a tent. So now July 21st they went to Bryce Canyon, Utah, and this is an hour and 20 minutes away from the Narrows at Zion. July 22nd, they were still at Bryce Canyon, Utah, and then July 26th is when they went to the Mystic Hot Springs in Monroe, Utah. From there, they went to Canyonlands National Park, Utah on July 30th. They went to Mesa Arch Canyonlands, and this was also located in Utah. This is when it began to go silent. So Gabby was not posting and neither was Brian. Gabby posted again 12 days later. Brian posted again 15 days later. The next post was on August 12th. They were at Arches National Park in Utah and Gabby posted well, multiple pictures. August 12th is the same day that they got pulled over. This is where we get to see the police footage. Um, it's an hour and a half long and this is when Gabby is like crying constantly. They ended up letting them go separately. So Brian stayed at a hotel that night. Gabby ended up staying in the van and police ended up thinking, they came to the conclusion that Brian was the victim in this case of domestic violence. And they asked Gabby if she was trying to hurt Brian and she said no and she said she was just hitting him. That's why he was swerving. He was driving 45 miles an hour in a 15 mile an hour zone. And there was also footage of somebody calling in about 
them fighting in a parking lot. We're gonna get into that more in a minute. We're gonna finish this whole timeline. So August 13th, Brian posted on Instagram after he was silent for 15 days. August 19th is when their YouTube video was posted to Nomadic Static on YouTube. Gabby, I'm assuming it was Gabby, posted the whole van life, the tour and everything. Um, however, Gabby also posted on Instagram that day with no location. We do know she was alive at this point though. August 21st, um, Gabby's dad ordered food for them and it was in Salt Lake City. Well, the reason the dad ordered food was because she told him that they had no Wi-Fi because there was giant storms and everything and like power, there was power outages. So he ordered them food to Salt Lake City. August 21st is the last time Gabby's dad spoke to her. Now, August 24th, they were in Salt Lake City and they were getting ready to go to Grand Tetons. Sorry if I'm saying anything wrong, by the way. So Grand Tetons in Wyoming. Gabby FaceTimed her mom this day. They were staying at, I think, a hotel or something. This is the last time Gabby's mom would FaceTime her. August 25th, there was an Instagram post with no location. There is the mural that she's standing in front of and it says happy halloween and the mural is from utah which is about 45 minutes away from salt lake city so i'm gonna assume that that picture that was in utah 45 minutes away from salt lake city was from august 24th when they were leaving because from salt lake city to grand tetons it's about four hours and 44 minutes depending on exactly where they were going but it was a four plus hour drive so I'm assuming they left on the 24th, they stopped, took the picture at the mural, and that's pretty much the last time anybody hears from Gabby. So August 30th, there was a text sent to Nicole, which is Gabby's mom, and this text was very unusual. So then on September 11th, that is when Gabby is reported missing. What happened between August 25th and September 11th? September 17th through the 23rd, we don't know if this is confirmed or if this is just something that somebody said, not confirmed, okay? So it's said that from August 17th to August 23rd, Brian flew home to empty a storage unit um, and then he returned to Utah on the 24th. I have a lot of problems with this because I don't understand why he would go in the middle of a road trip back home when he's living with his parents to clean out a storage unit. Like, can his parents do it? Can he wait till they're back? Like, that doesn't make sense. Another point I wanna talk about is, we're gonna skip ahead to talk about the police footage from August 12th. So on August 12th, the police footage, I'll insert it as well. There is, at one point, the pol the cop asks Brian if he has a phone and Brian says I don't have a phone and he's worried because how is he supposed to get in contact with Gabby if he doesn't have a phone and he's supposed to go to the hotel right um, and I, well, I was holding on to the keys because I just I didn't want to go anywhere and my big fear is I, mean, I, I don't have my phone I don't really I don't have a phone so she goes off without me you know all right I'm on my own <laughs> well at 55 minutes and about 25 seconds the cop then asks brian for his phone number if you watch the whole footage you can see at one point brian goes to the van to get his stuff um that is when he grabs his phone and his backpack but before that a female cop comes up and asks brian for gabby's phone and he was like oh well i have to get it because it's in a certain spot which is kind of weird that makes me think he's like keeping it away from her or something so he goes into the passenger side gets gabby's phone he like looks out for a second then gives it to the cop the cop takes the phone to gabby okay so gabby has her phone she okay yeah, like her phone do you know yeah. where it is yeah, okay. without going for where yeah, is just it yeah just hang it yeah go ahead and tell me if you don't mind me grabbing it i'll get grab it because it's like it's in a spot why don't i go with you where are we going okay. in the car when the cop asks for brian's phone number later on he pulls a phone out of his pocket. Okay, so if you don't have a phone, whose phone is this? Because it's not Gabby's. Gabby's phone is with her because the cop just came and got it. So that does not make sense, and I don't know why the cops didn't see that, but that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, my phone number? Yeah. Okay. Okay.
And then, right before the two separate, the cop goes to Gabby, lets her know that, like, Brian's gonna stay in a hotel, you can have the van, um, you can't speak to him until tomorrow, is there anything you want me to say to him? Like, love you, good night, speak to you tomorrow. She's like, yeah, that's fine. She's like, also tell him, don't forget his phone charger. Phone charger? Why does he have a phone charger if he doesn't have a phone? So the cop goes and relays that information and he starts laughing. He's like, oh yeah, phone charger. I was just looking for it. I found it. Okay, so you have a phone? It doesn't make sense. Let me show you that you get a phone charger. That's what I'll be there. I'll be as bad about that too. Yeah. Okay, I'll make sure that he has a phone charger. Okay. <laughs> two, don't forget a cell phone charger. Yeah, good. He watched me fumble around the entire cause three laps around the car to find no one. Yeah, find one? Find one. Okay. Now going back to what we just talked about with the storage unit thing. Again, we don't know if this is confirmed, but if Brian did go back home to clean out the storage unit and he didn't have a phone, how did he get to the airport, go to the storage unit, come back on the 24th and have Gabby get him from the airport? Like it makes no sense. There's no way that you can't contact somebody during that time. And she's alone? in a national park while you're cleaning out a storage unit. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't add up. August 25th, the family believes that they were in Tetons National Park because they got multiple texts from Gabby that day. And on the 24th, she FaceTimed her mom and she told her mom that they were going there. I did hear somewhere that there was a lot of tension between Gabby and Brian during this whole time and she was relaying that information to her mom. So August 27th, a weird text comes from Gabby's phone to Nicole, Gabby's mom, saying, can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. And Stan is Gabby's grandmother. I'm sorry, grandfather. Gabby does not call Stan, Stan. That's not what she calls him. So her mom thought that was really weird. It can't be Gabby texting. And then people speculate if it was Gabby, maybe she was asking for help without saying it because Brian has been controlling her phone the whole time. So also on August 27th, a YouTube channel known as Red, White, and Bethune, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, caught footage of Gabby's van. They didn't know it at first. They were just recording um, like they do because they're YouTubers that travel and everything. And they ended up finding out that they caught the van on camera. And they distinctively remember it because they are also from Florida and this van had Florida license plate and they're all the way in Wyoming so they were like, oh, like maybe we should say hi. But as they were driving past, they noticed that the van was very dark, there was nobody inside and there was nobody around. So they just kept going. On August 29th, Brian was hitchhiking. So all this information is gonna come from a TikTok user known by Miranda Baker. So it was said that Brian was hitchhiking and he got picked up by TikToker Miranda Baker and her boyfriend at about 5.30 p.m. at Coulter Bay. He got in, he said he was going to Jackson, so they gave him a ride, they were making small talk, and he offered to give them $200. He wanted to go to Jackson, he mentioned his fiance was in a van working on social media posts, and that he was out camping alone for a couple of days, and the only thing he had was a tarp. But Miranda noticed that he looked really clean and he didn't smell, which was odd because if you're out camping by yourself for a few days with only a tarp, like you're gonna be a little dirty, messy, smell like sweat probably. Like, so Miranda ended up saying like, they're going to Jackson Hole. And that's when Brian got like really agitated and was like, let me out. Like, I'm not going to Jackson Hole. That's not where I wanted to go. She said they let him out at around 6.09 PM near Jackson Dam. He was telling them like, I'm gonna go hitchhike with somebody else. He walked across the street in the parking lot and then he disappeared. August 30th, the text from Gabby to her mom that was unusual said no service in Yosemite. And Gabby's mom doubts that it was from Gabby. On September 1st, Brian showed up home with Gabby's van, but no Gabby. Prior to September 10th, Gabby's family was trying to get in contact with her. And at this point, they don't know that Brian came home on September 1st, they don't know anything, 
So in their minds, they're thinking both Gabby and Brian are missing. They haven't heard from him in a while and they're worried. So this whole time they were trying to contact Brian's family and nobody's answering them. They're not getting anything. So September 10th, Gabby's dad actually um, has cops go to Brian's house. And when they get there, they find Gabby's van in the driveway. So they thought, oh, okay, maybe she's home. She's not contacting her parents. They knock on the door and Brian's parents answer. At this point, he, the police ask them, like, is Gabby here? And they say no comment. Like, they want nothing to do with this. Can they talk to Brian? No comment. No, you can talk to our attorney. That's that. So we're not getting anywhere with Brian Laundrie's family. They are not helping the investigation whatsoever. So sus, like all of a sudden you have an attorney, your son comes home without his fiance and you just go straight to an attorney. That does not make you look terrible at all. Gabby's family reports her missing on September 11th. September 14th is when Brian tells his family that he's packing a bag and he's gonna go, I believe it was like five miles down the road to hike in the Carlton Reserve on the 14th your fiance is missing, you're gonna pack a bag and just go hike. That's normal. He backed his backpack and drove his Mustang to Carlton Reserve. On September 15th, Brian's family went looking for him. They found his Mustang with a police note on it saying that it needed to be moved. Well, the family ended up leaving the Mustang there thinking, oh, maybe Brian will drive it back home the next day or whatever. September 16th, the next day, one of Brian's family members drives uh, the Mustang back from the reserve to their house and Brian is nowhere to be seen. This seems so suspicious. Like his family knows something and they're not talking. Like, it's so aggravating. September 17th, Brian's family ended up reporting him missing at this point because they haven't seen him in a couple days. When in fact, I'm sure they know exactly where he is. September 19th is when, unfortunately, Gabby's body was found in Spread Creek. And this is near where her van was last seen in that YouTube video. September 20, 20th, a search warrant was authorized of the laundry house and they also towed that Mustang that Brian drove to Coulter Reserve on the 14th. September 21st, Gabby's autopsy is still currently pending at this time. However, it was um, ruled a homicide. And that's pretty much where we're at at the moment. Still, Brian is missing. Gabby's autopsy is pending. We know it was homicide, so Brian is definitely, I feel like at this point, not just a person of interest, but now a suspect. He was the last one to see her alive. He was the last one with her. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense. There's a few things we're gonna talk about related to the case that are not confirmed and like weird, confusing information. So I'm not going to go into information about this because I feel like a lot of you have probably heard about this one, about the double murder in Moab, where they were pulled over on the 12th. We don't really know what, uh, if the cases are related, if Brian could have done that, time will tell. So I'm not going to go into detail with that one, but that's weird. It was also said that one of the girls that was murdered actually worked at the grocery store where Brian and Gabby were seen fighting. Also in the police footage video, I was quite confused because according to the police, they called a witness and I don't know if like the media is getting this wrong or if there is a second witness that is an unnamed and we all are just associating the witness as one with and that being Chris. So the reason I say this is because I'm confused towards the end. I believe there was two witnesses to the whole argument on the 12th. And the reason I say that is because they called one when they pulled over Gabby and Brian. They called one of the witnesses. I don't know who the, the witness was that they called, but this witness claimed that they did not see Brian hurt or like they didn't see Brian hit Gabby is what the wording was. However, they did see him push her away. They don't know if that was because of him like defending himself or pushing her to hurt her. We don't know. Now, they did say that they had another witness they didn't talk to, 
I don't remember at what point they said that, but they did say that. And I want to say this is the witness that did see Brian hit Gabby. And I will go ahead and add the footage of the police call in the video so that you can hear that. Okay. Hey, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower. And we're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute. Florida with a white van, Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about it at? five, six beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. They made a, uh, a right onto Main Street from Moonflower. Or what were they doing? But, um, what'd you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by, and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. He ended up looking at the cop, and he kind of, like, laughed when the cop told him, like, oh, the witness that we called said they didn't see you hit her or anything. And he, like, looked at the cop and, like, chuckled and then, like, listened again. I don't know. I thought that was really weird. Why are you laughing in this situation? Like, I don't know. I don't know. The witness did not see you strike her. So at this point, you're the victim of domestic assault. And even, if you, <laughs> even if you did. Now, one of the newer things that I saw that we don't know if it's true or what, but there was speculation that could Gabby have been pregnant? There's a link from that video we saw where the YouTubers saw the van. There was a piece of wood. Now this could be photoshopped. We don't know any of this being confirmed. So there was like um, ultrasound pictures on this piece of wood. Also, they were talking about how Brian was reading this book called A Lullaby where this guy goes on a cross country trip and murders his wife and baby. Odd, I would say odd. But again, this is all just speculation. We don't have any of this being confirmed. Next few days, we will get hopefully more information, more confirmation on what's going on with the case. But until then, it's we just don't really know anything. I'm gonna hope that they find Brian soon. So if anybody does have any information, please contact the FBI police, local police, let them know if you see anything. There's been a lot of speculation of people seeing him. A lot of them were discarded and were not him. So we are going to continue our search. And if you guys have any information, please let your local law enforcement know. I am going to say there is one thing that I was looking into about what I believe happened. I believe something happened to Gabby on the 25th. A lot of people were saying that her posts weren't making sense and her most recent post her hair was touched up where the other ones they weren't so it was probably an old picture so it's very confusing and even the whole Instagram like bio piece under the picture the words were weird and everything so this is what I believe could have happened was Brian ended up driving the van back to Florida he entered Florida I think it was like around 10 something a.m. and the drive from where he was at around Jackson's Dam which is also near where Gabby's body was so I believe after he got out of the car on September 29th at around 6 something at night 609 at night after he left the TikToker Miranda Baker and her boyfriend to go find another hitchhiker. I think what ended up happening was since he was near where the van was, he ended up walking to the van, driving the van that night towards Florida. And the drive from where he was at Spread Creek to Florida is about a 34 hour drive. So to get from August 29th speak spread Creek to September 1st at 10 something in the morning in Florida he must have gone straight to the van at that point to drive to Florida that's what I believe I believe that he must have done something to her on the 25th or the 26th and 
the rest we can all just kind of imagine what happened. We won't get much information until they find Brian. Hey guys, future Celeste here. Sorry, I like just woke up. Um, but last night while I was editing this video, more leads that cannot be confirmed have been um, posted. So I am going to be posting them now. And new today, we're learning from neighbors that the entire laundry family mother, father, and son Brian went on a camping trip while Gabby was missing. This is what the neighbors told Fox News. We saw them, uh, I saw them loading it up, and so I assumed they were preparing for, a, you know, a, a camping trip with their they, new camper. They were going for the weekend. Those neighbors today, for the first time, said that a week to and a week and a half ago, they saw the laundries, the mom, the dad, and the son, Brian Laundry, all packing up this camper van right here, this camper that goes on the back of this truck, and that they went away for a weekend to go camping. All of this while the search was happening for Gabby Petito after Gabby Petito had been uh, reported missing, Ashley. Matt and I just realized, because I don't know, because I'm a freaking dumbass and I did not put two and two together, that we saw, not only saw, but saw like a blowout of a situation between Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie in Wyoming when we were there. I'm freaking the fuck out. Yes, we have already talked to authorities. Like how I did not put two and two together that this happened, like I don't know. So I'm following this case. Matt's not, he's a guy, he has other shit going on. He could probably care less. I'm filling him in on this case a couple days ago and, and I guess maybe he Googled it and saw a picture of Brian. Matt has an insane photographic memory. And so for two days now, he's like, I fucking know that guy, Brian. Like, I don't know how, but I know this guy, Brian. Like, I've seen him before. When Matt says that, anyway, we were in Wyoming. So Matt woke up this morning and he's freaking out. And he's like, oh my God, I know. I know how he looks familiar. Nina, we saw them in Wyoming. They were the couple fighting at the restaurant. We were at this restaurant, you guys. Friday, August 27th, 1 p.m., sitting right next to them. They got kicked out of the restaurant and were fighting with the hostess. They were fighting with the hostess. She was hysterically crying and she walked out and she, she was crying and she was staying on the sidewalk and I was watching the whole thing unfold. And he walked back in the restaurant and he's fighting with the hostess. And we, I, I didn't know what happened. I don't even know if they got kicked out, but they like left abruptly. And like, she was standing on the sidewalk crying and he walked back in and was like screaming at the hostess and then walked back out. And then he walked back in like four more times to talk to the manager and to like tell the hostess off. So those are all the updates we have so far. Um, like I said, I will try and keep you guys as updated as I can with this case and what is to come, um, but time will tell at this point there's not much anything else we can do until we get more information but like i said i will keep giving you guys updates on what is to come let me know down in the comments what you believe happened if i missed anything please let write it down in the comments and i will get more information out as soon as we find more until next time bye guys